Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be working on a special console called the JVC XI. This is a Sega Genesis combined with a Sega CD in a single shell, which is what you're seeing right here. And this was made in a partnership with JVC and Sega. And um, I mean, I really have to say, this is the way that I think the Sega CD should have always looked. It's really nice to have everything as one single unit and not have the, you know, crazy tower of power where you have, you know, the Sega Genesis, the CD, and then maybe the 32X where it just gets huge and totally out of control. I mean, I have a soft spot in my heart for that too, but the aesthetics of this console are just really quite nice. And uh, my friend who got this not too long ago was lucky enough to also get two of the original JVC controllers. And I think these things are actually significantly harder to find than the console itself. Um, so yeah, unfortunately he kind of, you know, got the bad end of a deal. He thought he was getting a working console and it's not, but you know, he's my friend. And so I'm going to help him out today and we're going to get this thing back, uh, running again. So yeah, let's go ahead and take it apart, see what's wrong with it and get it fixed. All right. So taking the XI apart is actually a pretty easy thing. You just got to flip it over and you've got six screws, three in the front, three in the back and they're Phillips. They're easy. You just take them out and that's it. Now I actually have not opened this up yet, so I'm in the dark. I don't know what I'm going to find here. Um, let's take a look. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to just adjust the light here so you guys can see this better. So you can see that there is clear signs of maybe some water or some dirt that has been in here in the past. So there's a whole bunch of, I don't know what down here that looks really gross. Um, I can see like what looks like a reaction to water on this RF shield. And I can see like little hints of rust on the underside as well, um, but not on the actual motherboard itself. So thankfully it looks like the RF shield might have saved this thing from any kind of damage. So that's great. Um, and I do know that this console works. I haven't actually tested it myself, but my friend told me that it does in fact work. Um, the only issue is that the laser itself seems to be failing because games aren't reading or it skips. And the other problem it seems to be having is right over here with this little uh, lid switch. And so I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so now we're up close to uh, the, the laser here and this little switch. And I'm just gonna talk about what it does and why this thing can create problems. So this little switch here, it detects whether the lid is actually open or closed. So when the lid is closed, there's like a little plastic piece that pushes down on this and it holds it down. And so the console reads that the lid is closed and it'll start searching for a game. Um, it's very common for these to fail. If you, if you can tell here, the tip of this little switch is really, really minute, really tiny. It's easy for these things to get broken or bent or messed up in some way or another. Um, so I'm gonna look at this and evaluate it. If the switch is actually still working, I might leave it in, um, but if it's not, if it's broken, it's not the end of the world. You can actually take a tactile switch and desolder this thing and replace it with a tactile switch, which has a much larger little button piece here, so it's going to work a lot better. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is the laser itself. So the JVC XI, it uses, predictably enough, a JVC laser. It's called the JVC Optimus 6. This is actually a really popular laser. It was used in, I believe, some versions of the Sega CD, including this one, of course, it was also used in the Sega Saturn and uh, the JVC XI. So what we're gonna do is just take this thing apart and get it out of here. So the first thing you gotta do is just remove this single screw, which holds the back in place. And now that's out, you can see that the whole thing is actually kind of springy. It's because it's being held on these little rubber parts, which are being held in place by, by springs, I believe, underneath. Um, so next thing we got to do is remove this flex cable. There's like a little set of, there's a, there's some bales over here that, that lock it. So you have to just kind of lift them up with your fingernail. And now the flex cable comes out. You can see that the contacts face towards the front of the console. And then the, the blue back, which is over here faces towards the back. Now, uh, I also have to remove this cable here. I believe this provides power. Um, and then now we've just got these four pieces of like, I don't know what this is exactly. It's like some kind of rubber, but you can just kind of unhook it. And there we go. Now you can see those springs I was talking about and here's those rubber components, which thankfully still feel really good. Okay, so let's keep going with the disassembly.
Okay, so um, we're gonna continue taking apart the laser assembly. And you can see over here, I there was a little bit of rust in this corner here, and so I actually used a little bit of Brasso and um, some abrasive sandpaper, and I just kind of rubbed away most of that rust. I just wanted to get this thing nice and clean. Um, and then of course I followed it up with alcohol. And this is probably one of the few things with retro gaming that's actually safe for brass. So like if you've got pieces of metal like this and you want to clean them off, then, you know, a brass polisher is really good. Just as long as you, you know, use alcohol and clean it all off afterwards. Um, but don't use it on your video game cartridges because you'll possibly wreck them. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to take this uh, shield off. It's just three screws right here. And now we can see the laser and the sled that it's on. So it's a little bit gross, but that's okay. Um, so now what we're gonna do is, you see this like, you know, rod over here, we're gonna set it free. So what you gotta do is you just pull this little plastic piece out of the way, it's like the lock. And now I can just pull the entire thing off. Like that. And now this whole thing can be set free. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull this clip off by just lifting these bales up on the sides like that and just set that off to the side. And the last thing that we need to do is just remove this piece right here. We're gonna attach this on the new laser. So <clears throat> it's being held in place by these little black plastic tabs. There's a few of them. So you have to kind of be careful though because you can destroy them if you're if you're not cautious. Let me just uh, take a quick look here and see which ones I have to pull on. Ah yes, that's right. okay. So <clears throat> there's one right here. There we go. So I just had to push on that and then push on this one here. And we should be able to get this thing free. Oof, okay. <laughs> It was really stuck in there. It was just this post. This little post here was just really kind of tight. I think it just it was covered in lubricant from the, the drive rails, but yeah. So <clears throat> it's these three posts right here that kind of latch it into place. And you can see, I was just pulling on it a little bit. Be careful, you don't want to snap the plastic because then this thing will become useless and then you're really in trouble. But yeah, now we're all done. We've gotten this thing taken apart. So let's have a look at our replacement laser. That's this JVC Optimus 6 right here. These are not original. Uh, these are reproductions, I believe, from China, but they do work. And um, when they're shipped, they have what's called an anti-static solder point right over here. And this is just to protect the laser in shipping. And so in order for the laser to work properly, we are gonna have to remove this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've got my soldering iron heated up. And so, yeah, there's just two pads right here that are bridged together with solder. And so all you got to do is just have a clean tip. And then if you just swipe downward like that, the solder gets absorbed onto the tip. And you see now we have two separate points just like that. All right. So now let's go ahead and snap this thing back into place and start reassembling it. So this literally just gets pushed straight in, just like that. And it should lock in like this. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and reverse our steps and put this thing back together. All right, before I put the shield back on, I'm also gonna just add a little bit of lubricant to this drive rail because I did take some off in just the course of disassembling this thing. And um, it's also, you know, 
something like 20 something years old. So at this point it needs to be replaced. So this is stuff that I've used in the past. It's um, it's actually lubricant for, for bikes, but it works really well on drive rails. So I'm just gonna like add a little dab of it here. That's probably actually a little too much, <laughs> but uh, I'll clean up the excess with a Q-tip before I close it up. I'll just add a little bit here as well. And if you feel like it, you can, you know, use these gears and just kind of move things back and forth, mainly just so that it picks up the lubricant and spreads it across the rail. And this will help it move smoothly and it helps increase uh, the speed of seat times and all that just because everything is gliding along these rails nice and easily. All right, so that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this thing and then we're gonna move on to the main motherboard. Okay, so now we're looking at the JVC XI motherboard and I thought that, you know, since we're here, I'll just show you some interesting stuff that's on this board that you might not really know about. Um, so for one, it's really clear that there were a bunch of last minute fixes and changes that were done to this before it was put out to market. So you can see that right here, like this is a factory bodge that was installed. Um, and so is this little filter capacitor that was added to this particular chip. You can see a couple more filter caps that were added here. So yeah, it looks like, you know, they must have been some sort of last minute mistakes with this, uh, you know, this console before it was released and then they added all these things in just to fix it all up. <laughs> um, not only that, I, I see there's clearly evidence that a S-Video port was being considered and at the very last minute it was um, omitted. I'm pretty sure that with some very minor um, parts added over here that you could add S-Video to the JVC XI. So that's kind of cool, just interesting stuff. Um, so yeah, we're going to go back over here to this daughter board, which is uh, the CD drive um, board here. And um, you can see there's these weird connectors here that, uh, that connect the two boards together. If you lift these up, you can remove it, but I'm not going to bother because the only thing I'm really focused on today is this little switch right here. So I'm going to try to be minimalistic about it here, and I'm just going to see if cleaning this is enough to get it to work. Sometimes these things are just filthy and they're not making good contact anymore. So what I'm using is a QD contact cleaner by CRC, and I use this all the time in consoles just to, like say if you've got a really filthy cartridge slot, this is great. If you've got, um, you know, switches that are filthy, uh, it's really good. So I'm just gonna hit it with just a little bit. I'm gonna actuate the switch. And it's alcohol-based, I believe, so it evaporates pretty fast. All right. That's probably enough. Um, so yeah, in the background, I've also been cleaning the console. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've done and we're gonna reassemble this thing and see how it works. All right, so I'm back with the bottom shell and you can see that it's improved quite a bit. So, you know, I took this thing and I gave it a very thorough scrubbing with soap and water and um, I had to go and hit some of these areas, you know, more intensely than others. Cause this thing was absolutely caked in rust and dirt and bugs. So yeah, it looks a hell of a lot better now than it did when I got it. Um, this is the RF shield, which as you can see, it's not actually even a solid piece of metal. It's just like this metal foil and then it has this plastic on the inside. So this protects the console from getting shorted out. I'm gonna throw this in the garbage. I don't think there's any reason to save this. And you know, in, in fact, like this actually did, you know, save the console because this thing was obviously exposed to water and the water hit this and not the system, and that's probably the only reason why the system still works at all. Um, but that being said, that thing is ruined. It's not worth trying to save, and it doesn't serve any kind of purpose, so I'm gonna toss it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this thing back in place.
All right, so I've got the XI fully assembled and now let's go ahead and give it a test. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take a retail game and I'm gonna start with having it here with the lid closed. And so in the past, it wouldn't detect that the lid was opened or closed at all. So let's see now if it works. And then secondly, of course, let's just see if the new laser did the trick. All right. Oh, wow, it loaded immediately. <laughs> okay, that is a really good sign. So normally you get that JVC XI splash screen, which is a little bit different from what you get on a standard Sega Genesis. And if it reads, it'll go immediately into this menu and say game up in the upper left-hand corner right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. Awesome. Looks like it's working. Let's see. Yeah, so this is the game Sewer Shark, and uh, this is a pack-in game that came with the Sega CD. This is probably the first game that I got with uh, with my Sega CD. And I remember thinking this thing was just so revolutionary at the time. And, you know, I started getting into the FMVs and eventually, you know, realized they were all pretty corny. But going back to these games now is actually quite a lot of fun. They're, they're really hilarious. Uh, I mean, everyone I'm sure has heard of Night Trap. That's a, a really awesome game to revisit. So yeah, it looks like this XI is working, which is fantastic. Um, so I think that basically wraps it up for this video. If you guys like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And then of course, if you've got a console that you want repaired or modified, you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.